everybody and uh, welcome to this uh, CDP webinar on corporate disclosure, a critical foundation for smart water management. Uh, first, yes, I wanted just to mention that uh, this webinar will be recorded and uh, participants will receive the recording of the, of the webinar as well as the presentation slide, slides that we are showing. There is a Q&A session uh, at the end of the presentation uh, and also a Q&A chat, which we uh, encourage you to use and ask questions during our presentations. Uh, we will try to answer some of them ad hoc in the chat and others we can address at the end of the, of the presentation. Uh, so, yeah, next slide, please. Um, I would like to introduce to you the speakers of today. So my name is Nadia Dedikova and I work in the policy team of CDP Europe, where I coordinate the uh, public affairs work with companies, investors, city, states and regions, uh, and I help provide data and insight to EU officials to facilitate evidence-based water-related decision-making. Um, Andreas supports companies in their water disclosure as an account manager for CDP reporter services program in the corporate team. And Jerome uh, helps investors in France, uh, Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg to understand and mitigate their water and environmental impact and achieve a water secured world. Next slide, please. Uh, our presentation today will give you the opportunity to understand how uh, CDP works, our theory of change, how EU disclosure framework could help achieve a water secured economy and how water data can help companies and investors to lower their impact on this scarce, scarce resource. Next slide can begin with a CDP introduction. Uh, so CDP Europe is a charity based in Brussels, Belgium. It is part of the global CDP system that drives companies and governments to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, to safeguard water resources and protect forests. As information is the fundamental, fundamental basis for action, we aim to make environmental reporting mainstream and provide detailed insight to drive action for a climate safe, water secure and deforestation free world. Uh, next slide. We leverage uh, investor, government and buyer power to motivate companies to disclose, manage their envir environmental impacts. Every year we send companies a request from their investors and from their governments to disclose information on three key themes, climate change, water and forest. We target companies with the biggest environmental footprint, but through our supply chain program, we also reach to smaller company, uh, companies along the value chain. By filling our questionnaires, companies start measuring their impact and over time improve their performance by setting ambition targets and monitor annually their progress. All this crisis, uh, all this critical source of uh, global uh, data, we feed back to policymakers and investors to make sure they have evidence and insight required to drive environmental action and make better informed decisions. Uh, next slide. This is a bit of uh, CDP uh, in statistics in Europe. So uh, CDP data set is the world's largest corporate climate and environment, environmental data set. Globally, over 8,400 companies with over 50% of global market capitalization disclosed environmental data through CDP in 2019. This includes more than 2,010 European companies representing approximately 76% of European market capitalization. This is in addition to over 950 city states and regions globally who disclosed, including more than 215 in Europe, making CDP's platform one of the richest sources of information globally and how companies and governments are driving environmental change. Uh, next slide, please. In the policy uh, team, we translate market best practices into policy making. We work together with organizations such as Water Europe and we participate in expert, gr expert groups such as the EU uh, Technical Expert Group on Sustainable Finance to advise European as well as national governments and officials on further regu regulatory actions. And uh, next on, I would like to present you a bit more the regulatory framework in Europe. Next slide, please. Um, so for the European Green Deal, and you can move, to, yes, thank you. For the European Green Deal to succeed, non-state actor climate action is irreplaceable. The private sector is vital to delivering a water secured future. Companies in the food, textile, energy, industry, retail, pharmaceuticals and mining sector account for more than 70% of world's water use and pollution. Decisions that companies make on how they grow, expand and use water resources should be transparent and regulation needs to be put in place to secure a thriving economy that works for both people and the planet in the long term. 
Therefore, we believe that non-financial reporting directive and the sustainable finance agenda from the European Commission are critical to achieve the goal of the European Green Deal. Next slide, please. <clears throat> reporting can help companies to consider and disclose environment, uh, information on their water goals and future development plans, on their risks and opportunities, and as well as to set clear targets to lower their negative impact. The Non-Financial Reporting Directive is the main regulation in the European Union, obliging companies to report environmental, social and governments, uh, governance information, the so-called uh, ESG criteria. The directive is now being revised. In its current form, it is not coherent and must better reflect the latest science provided by the IPCC report. The FIA was introduced in 2014 and therefore its revision now should include uh, the new developments in non-financial reporting, such as the uh, newly adopted EU taxonomy regulation, as well as the upcoming European non-financial standards. The current review offers the opportunity to improve mandatory reporting across the EU. It needs to specify that environmental information includes at minimum climate change mitigation, climate change adaptation, water security, as well as land use and commodity driven deforestation. Transparency into this risk area is the foundation for driving the urgent action demanded by the science and the use go uh, long term ambitions. And it is key for companies to understand their risk and uh, bio resilience. The current review can strengthen the inside out disclosure by, man by mandating all companies to disclose long term transition plans toward water secure scenarios and temperature go in line with the IPCC. The revised legislation has the, uh, the potential to push companies to allocate resources and disclose the dedicated strategies, approaches and timeline for pushing climate and natural resource neutrality in line with the EU 2050 climate targets. Companies who disclose to CDP are already ahead of the curve and their ambition action can be used as best practice examples. Next slide, please. There is an imminent need for a sustainable finance system as a key driver for a sustainable economy that operates within planetary boundaries. The European Commission's action plan on financing sustainable growth aims to move financial markets across to allocate substantial private capitals towards businesses uh, which are transitioning towards the zero carbon resource secure business models in a way that is measurable and within the required pace. The same is needed from European cities and regions which can drive sustainable business behavior through their purchasing power and local government uh, authority. A new publication from CDP Europe uh, provides concrete guidance of how companies, investors, local and national governments can use the CDP system to implement and go beyond the regulatory requirements. Next slide, please. You can see that the first action on the plan, on the EU action plan uh, to uh, finance sustainable growth is establishing a EU classification system for sustainable activities or the so-called EU uh, taxonomy regulation. This regulation establishes the criteria for determining whether an economic activities, uh, econ activities is environment environmentally sustainable for the purposes of establishing the degree of environmental sustainability of an investment. The EU taxonomy is a list of economic activities with uh, performance criteria for their contribution to six environmental objectives. Uh, the objectives you can see on the, on the screen here. And um, it is clear that water, um, it is present as a separate objective, but it can be included in all the, the six objectives defined by the Commission. The, tax the taxonomy sets uh, performance thresholds, therefore uh, referred to as the technical screening criteria for economic activities with, uh, which, with, which will make a substantial contribution uh, to one of these six environmental objectives, will do no significant ha harm to any other of the five uh, objectives, and will meet uh, minimum safeguards. For example, the EU guiding principles, uh, the UN guiding principles on business and human rights. The EU taxonomy will provide clarity via a common language for investors, issuers, policymakers, and regulators. The taxonomy will help translate commitments to the Paris Agreement and the SDGs for investors. It will bridge the gap between international goals and investment practices, signalizing the types of activities that are consistent with the low carbon transition, adaptation and other environmental objectives. Uh, it will put environmental data uh, in the context. Investors need to understand which companies are contributing to the low carbon transition and which are building resilience to climate change and not just carbon footprints. And finally, it will support different investment styles and strategies. 
Investors making environmentally sustainable funds can invest in the taxonomy eligible activities, engage companies on how they are processing towards taxonomy thresholds, or provide their own explanation for how they will achieve the fund's goal. And with this, um, I will be happy to answer any questions you may have on this. Uh, the taxonomy regulation will become effective from 31st December 2020 uh, onwards. So if you have any other questions, you can let me know. And I give the floor to Jerome now to present uh, his uh, part on the Capitals Market Initiative on Water. Thank you. Thank you, Nadia. I would like to thank as well all the Water Europe uh, members that are joining this uh, this webinar today, and just reminding everyone that you have a Q and A box, and we will have a Q and A session at the end of this uh, of this webinar. Um, so thanks again, and. Um, my role today is to present how investors are working with the CDP water data. Uh, and for that, I would just like to uh, review once again what Nadia has already shown you is the, the, how CDP works. So, as you may know, CDP is an NGO that uh, collects environmental uh, corporate data, uh, but also city data and region uh, data. Uh, what I'm working personally is on the corporate data and I'm working with investors because as you can see on this chart here, uh, one of actually the foundation of CDP relied on investor support. So as you can see on the top left, the investor requests companies to disclose on environmental data on three themes, climate change, water and deforestation. And so today we will look particularly at the water questionnaire, the water themes and all the data that are collected uh, through this process. Just want to highlight as well that beside the investor requests, um, we also have a supply chain request that uh, basically comes from large firms that want to engage all their supply chain, asking them as well to disclose on certain theme, whether one uh, theme or the three of them. So this is quite impressive in the sense that there's a large number of investors together. They represent um, $106 trillion in assets. We have banks, insurances, pension funds, and asset managers. So asset owners, asset managers, and banks. And that's why it's a very large uh, number of assets when you put it together. On the supply chain requests, uh, that the purchasing power of the, all the different companies that engage their uh, supply chain represent about $4 trillion uh, in, a, in purchasing power. So thanks to this um, collaborative engagement mechanism, then CDP collects data and is then able to redistribute the data um, uh, to, to the markets and to the different participants, including uh, to consultancies and, and other actors. Just a view on uh, the, the, this mechanism and, and so like the, the what questionnaire was launched in 2015. And so we can see an evolution in terms of number of companies requested to CDP, and that is including both the investor and the supply chain requests. So you can see in light blue, the number of companies requested and in dark blue, the number of companies who responded. What you can see here is that we've, uh, in 2019, we've actually um, gone over 2000 companies uh, disc disclosing through CDP. Why do they do that? Uh, on water particularly, well, it's interesting. I've, I've added a quote here from an independent consultant, fir consultant firm who, who looked at the, the CDP data and uh, the status of the disclosure of companies and realized that companies that were disclosing had better access to capital markets and to capital. So this is one financial perspective for the company. And that's why at CDP, we deal a lot with the uh, investor relations team because they the companies are looking to provide uh, good and standardized information to their investors or to their, uh, to their clients. 
So um, it's important to see that their ability to capital is, um, is increased through transparency. Now there are a number of other advantages in disclosing, including guiding them in their own transition towards a better and water secure world. Now, these figures you see on the right are specifically for the investor requests. So for the investor requests, we switched from 626 companies in 2016 to 824 companies last year, 2019 disclosure cycle. So that's that's a 30% increase. And, um, and why does it increase? Is because there's a higher demand about water data and specifically the CDP water data because it's standardized and comparable. We, we uh, as you can see, we, can, uh, we align the questionnaire sent to companies uh, is aligned with international frameworks and standards. So with, for example, the task force on climate financial disclosure uh, or the global reporting um, standards as well. And, and also with other financial standards. Also an important point is that the questionnaire is public. Everything we do at CDP is transparent. Uh, we're an NGO, we are mission driven. And so for this reason, there's a big appetite uh, for uh, all the actors to uh, either report their data and then for other actors to use this data because they really understand that the source is, is very clear. It's coming straight from the companies um, and they can understand what exactly was asked. So um, that's an important point. The companies are then um, scored based on the, the, the data that is being uh, disclosed. I will come back on, on these data sets. This is the evolution of the investor request and signatories. So you can see that the investor world has increased, uh, the interest has increased. What is important to see is the uh, number of assets uh, that have been increasing. And as you could see early, uh, earlier, from 96 trillion last year, uh, the asset under management now has increased to 106 trillion. So it's increasing year over year, year over year, and we have more and more investor uh, that become signatory of CDP and support this water uh, request to companies. Why do they care? Why do they sign up? Well. That's also part of our responsibility at CDP to uh, highlight that um, water is a material issue for them. So we have different, um, I would say, statuses among investors. Some are more aware, some, some are still in this discovery journey, and our role is to accompany them. But in a nutshell, you can see here the, the message um, that they tell us and also the message that we convey them. There are mega trends um, regarding, um, well, macroeconomic or uh, I would say social mega trends, um, population growth, emerging economies, climate change that have an impact on water. Um, indeed, it can um, the, the, it, the climate change and the global warming increase scarcity, for example. Um, the population growth or the emerging uh, emerging economies can have an impact on. Um, inadequate infrastructure or declining water quality. And as a consequence, it has then an impact on companies themselves. It can provoke, uh, it can provoke it like supply chain disruption, brand damage, um, operation as well, like stop of operations because there's no longer water to cold the, to have a cold effect on the operations. So can have a direct impact on companies and so consequently can have a direct impact, direct financial impact in terms of increasing operating costs or revenue loss because the company had to stop working for a certain period. In total, this year, uh, a report that Andreas uh, right after me will um, introduce to you showcased that um, this uh, the financial value at risk is comprised among the companies that reported to CDP between 188 billion dollars up to 425 billion dollars. We can still that is the highest number ever reported to CDP, and that is still an underestimation because not every company reports to CDP. 
So it just uh, allows us to have an idea of what the financial impact, <laughs> well, a ballpark figure of what financial impacts may have, but that are, these are figures reported by companies themselves. Companies in the food, textile, retail, energy, industrial. So they are sectors that these main sectors have a large influence on water use and, and water pollution. Over 70% of, of those um, of, of, of influence. So of course, failure to achieve a water goals will have consequences uh, in terms of business, economic, um, uh, and so forth. What are investors looking at particularly? Um, well, what is interesting here is that they care, of course, of the disclosure. Is a company be, is being transparent or not? Uh, but also the governance and strategy. How is the company addressing this issue? Who is responsible in the company for addressing this issue? Is it at the board level? Is it just a separate department? Um, so the governance strategy is, is a very important metric. Then there's a measuring and monitoring part that uh, the key metrics that investors look at. Um, to name a few, we can think of uh, water withdrawals, for example, and then water withdrawal per basin, so per water basin. So we can look at really which areas of the world are more impacted and are more at risk. Then risk ass assessment. So as I said earlier, the question follows the task force on climate disclosure. So uh it we we ask a lot of risk uh, questions and we ask them to evaluate the risk to explain what they are and to actually name a financial figure um so and the same thing is done for opportunities then targets and goals uh cdp is not only looking at the past or present picture of a company but is trying to also assess a forward looking um a vision of the company. So there's a lot of forward looking assessments within the CDP questionnaire. And that is, um, that means targets and goals. Do they, for, do they actually set targets to reduce their water withdrawals, for example? Finally, investors are interested in value chain engagement so that they have a, a, comp a comprehensive understanding of, uh, of the, the company's impact and assessment. And now I would like to showcase to you how the CDP water that has been used in the investment community. And um, I will just uh, highlight a couple of things um, and the main, I would say, uh, usage. Um, I split it in three. Um, the first one I would like to highlight is how the CDP water that is used in research products and ESG rating. So I've highlighted here some of the ESG rating agencies that are um, maybe the more, more famous that use the CDP water data. Um, so the MSCI, uh, ISS, Climatrix, which is a, a, an environmental rating for funds, part of CDP, um, and uh, S&P Global. So they typically purchase data uh, for the water data and use it in their own rating to assess uh, the environmental scores of companies consultancies as well can use the data can use cdp water data and i know that uh, there's a number of consultants uh, members of the water europe uh, group the second aspect is the financial indices so we're trying to push that we we want basically more to, to draw attention on, on the water topic, um, we, we, we are pushing for more actors using and following um, the, the water data, water disclosure, or other type of data. And that's the case of Euronex, and I will explain you a, a business case. I, I, uh, I, I will explain you in detail how they use uh, the water data. Finally, it's, it's also used by the CDP signatories. As you could see earlier, we we have today uh, a bit more than 515 signatories, as I said, banks, asset managers, uh, pension fund, insurance companies, and they are using the CDP water data that is uh, accessible to them. So they support the requests sent to companies, and then in a second time, they have access to the data. 
they have access to two types of data, the raw data, so the responses to the questionnaire, and a transformed data, which is the CDP score. The CDP score assesses the level of transition or stewardship of a company towards um, a, a, a water secure um, posi position. So how are they transitioning in terms of uh, water issues? It can switch from they're just answering questions, but they're not very aware to they're aware of how they impacted and how they impact the environment, but they're not being yet active. They're not yet doing anything to they are actually managing they're aware and they are managing. And then the best score, which is the A list, the A CDP A list, they actually have the best practice in place. And by that, we mean that they have ambitious targets. They have very ambitious targets and they have the means to actually um, achieve them. They engage the supply chain. They are part of different coalitions. So these are best practices that are recognized uh, within the A list. And so CDP signatories access this uh, raw data and scores and use it to screen companies, assess the water risk impact of their portfolios, uh, engage. So corporate engagement is a big part of their usage. And then they can sometimes, especially for large asset managers or large banks, they actually build their own ratings and they integrate the, the CDP water data into their own in-house ratings. Now let's look at three business case, uh, three, three case studies in focus. I will look at Climatrix to give you an idea of how it's used in ratings. Euronext to give you an idea of how it's used in financial indices. And then um, NVIM, the, the Norway uh, sovereign fund, which is the, I think the largest or the second largest after the Japanese uh, so, uh, pension fund, that is, I think, the, the, the largest uh, fund in the world. Then the no NVIM is the, the largest asset order, uh, in the world after, after this one. So let's look at one after another. First, the focus on Climatrix. So Climatrix is part of CDP and uh, is the only environmental rating for funds in the world, um, as far as we know, uh, not doing ESG rating, but environmental rating. And uh, what is interesting there is that Climatrix started since November, um, changing the methodology so that they include uh, greenhouse gas emission, of course, water, and also deforestation. So they look at these three axes and they use CDP scores on water as a proxy to identify uh, the, the companies that are, um, that, are, that are underperforming or overperforming. And based on that, they come up with the company scores um, that is taking into account th these three themes, including the materiality. Some companies um, are more impactful on water than others. And this is also taken into account. So based on that, when Climatrix produces a rating on the fund, which is between one green leaves to five green leaves for the best funds, then it, it takes into account those three things, including water. The second example is a regarding index. And um, Euronex has launched a series of index starting in uh, June 2018. And what is important here as well is that they take into account the three themes of CDP, including the water theme, and they don't actually assess the materiality. They, when it's available, the score is available, whether the company disclosed or not, the moment they've been requested, it's going to be, be taken into account. If they don't answer, they have a failure to disclose score, which is an F, and that will be taken into account. And as you can see here, the failure to score, the failure to disclose score, the F score gives zero point. But uh, then companies that have uh, higher scores, um, like A, uh, will be transformed into a numerical score. And what uh, Euronext does then is that from their universe that they look at, they will take the only 20, 40, or, or 50 highest environmental scores taking into account as well the, the, the water score. And so that's why, uh, so why 20, 40 or 50 depends on the indices. You can see you have the list. So for example, for the French, uh, France uh, in the index, it's the top 20. 
So it's, it's a, I would say, small index or a limited number of uh, companies in there. And so they, they would select the top 20 environmental scores to select this, uh, these companies. Uh, for the world, then it's, it's, uh, it's 50 companies. So it's interesting, based on this index, investors can build funds, can build products, and it creates liquidity and it attracts focus and, and uh, capital to companies that are better placed towards the transition. So it's, a, it's like closing the loop on getting companies to disclose and also getting access to capital to those companies. And it also creates liquidity and, and, and attracts more investors to look at these topics as well. The last example is an example of a, a not just bank investment management, as I said, the sovereign, sovereign uh, fund of Norway. Um, very large fund, they have nearly 1 trillion uh, assets under uh, management. Uh, and as you can see, it was uh, after uh, it's a up to date figure. So even in COVID crisis, they have very large. Uh, asset uh, member. What I wanted to showcase here is like, it's just one example of how one signatory among 500 uh, uses the CDP water data. It's an important one. And uh, they create their in-house score and in-house water score. But what they did is they compared how their water score compares with CDP scores. And what you can see on this chart here is that they've, uh, their score is it is, is uh, five possibilities, either weak, relatively weak, average, strong, uh, relatively strong or strong. But what we can see is that there's a very high correlation between their water score, which is a very important uh, score in the market, and the CDP disclosing status. So companies that, so the, the, a large portion of companies that have strong water score, according to the NBIM, are also disclosing to CDP. There's a very high correlation there. So it shows the importance of disclosure, and it shows as well that um, the, 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 it's, it's important for companies as well to disclose for, for themselves. That's it for me. Please uh, write up your, your question if you have any uh, on the QA Q a chat. Uh, thank you very much, and I will pass the I'll pass uh, the, the, the presentation to, to Andreas to look at uh, more data insights. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Jerome. Uh, really appreciate those uh, investor-led uh, insights. And also good to know about Climetrics. Uh, it really is a great tool. And uh, as Jerome mentioned, it does rely on CDP data. And uh, basically, CDP data is sort of the gold mine of information that investors use, but also other companies use to uh, learn best practice and clean up their acts, uh, so to speak, uh, on, on, on water issues. Um, and I would like to talk to everyone here today a little bit about the data that the corporates have actually responded and given. Uh, and this is something that we've summarized in an extremely fascinating and enlightening report that we have available on our CDP website. Uh, our Global Water Report 2019. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the information that we've uh, been able to take from CDP disclosure last year um, and, and some insights on what companies should be focused on in terms of uh, pollution, actually. Uh, so uh, the CDP Water Report, uh, just a summary, is uh, the, uh, the amalgamation of 2,433 uh, companies who have responded uh, both through the investor request and the supply chain request. And so this is this report is the first time that we've been able to sort of combine both of these uh, requests and information and data together. Uh, so we've put the data sets together and we've provided a more holistic market-based view that helps identify key trends at an industry and geographic level. Uh, so I'm gonna go through this. It, the report talks, uh, you know, shines light basically on how water pollution, an issue that has been grossly underestimated uh, and can severely affect business performance, um, can have widespread economic and human health implications. Uh, so just a quick overview of what kind of information are we requesting? Uh, those companies who are here know that the CDP water questionnaire asks about not just, you know, it asks about your, your, your business risk uh, to, uh, to water. 
Um, so more companies than ever are disclosing on water issues and seeing the benefits of this disclosure. Uh, CDP's disclosure process, when companies start on this journey, it enables companies to engage with these issues, assess whether they have risks, uh, benchmark their progress through the standardized scoring process, which is also, as Jerome mentioned, uh, completely transparent and available online, and gives investors and customers really the confidence that their interests are well managed. Um, so once again, as, as my colleagues mentioned, uh, companies that disclose through CDP have been found by recent research to have a, a greater ability to access capital. Um, and, and this is the framework that the water questionnaire uses uh, to start companies on the journey uh, to insights and action. And the beauty of this disclosure framework actually is that it moves water out of the, you know, the boiler room into the boardroom uh, by asking questions about implications of water issues uh, for growth strategies in, in, in sections uh, such as the uh, business strategy section in W7. And it elevates the importance of, of these issues and triggers a real conversation at the highest levels of the company and a transformation in the ways in which firms decide to grow. So if you're interested in a framework for how to take these water issues and really give it the value it deserves uh, throughout the organization, uh, the framework for CDP will help with that. Uh, specific uh, uh, sections that I think are of, of, of very imp uh, imp high importance, uh, current state um, within the framework of pollution, right? Current state will, you know, ask companies to provide an overview of the importance of water to your company's operations. Uh, will get you to ask the questions: Are we monitoring our uh, our discharges? Uh, what what exactly do we know about our impact water's impact on our business? And this section in current state W1 asks you to consider dependence on water throughout your upstream and downstream operations. Another really important section that you can learn a lot from if you're just responding for the first time, or even if you've been responding for a while, is procedures. Uh, so this is one of the more critical modules. And in, the, in light of the pollution topic, uh, it really asks you and, and, and sort of helps you understand whether you're, you have evaluated how water risk could affect the success of your organization's growth strategy. And it really integrates these topics into uh, your, your planning uh, for the future. Um, and the risks and opportunities, of course, I'm going to give you a little bit more detail on that uh, right now. So um, next slide, please. Talk a little bit about the risks. So we have uh, three different types of risks. Uh, this is in alignment also with the TCFD recommendations. Uh, water can have direct and indirect risks. If you don't know that, then, then the uh, disclosure to CDP is a good place to start. Um, the, the risks usually range from what we would call um, physical risks. So basically water scarcity, flooding, uh, you know, increased severity of weather uh, events. And then we have transition risks such as, you know, negative media coverage, um, you know, regulatory risks uh, that up until today most companies only associate with pollution. Uh, it can be much more than that, actually. Um, and, and we've seen that, you know, double the number of companies are showing leadership actually on water issues, uh, yet these companies are, are just the tip of the iceberg in assessing these types of risks. And uh, let's just move to the next slide. I think, you know, Jerome has talked about this already, but the economic imperative is stronger than ever. Uh, we have that figure again. Look at how many, uh, how much money is, is, is now being reported. Uh, this is something that we've, we've been able to assess for the first time this year, 425 billion. Um, and you know that means that 45% uh, of the responders report exposure to substantive risks from water insecurity, 45% uh, that threaten their reputation and license to operate. And that's just the ones that have assessed these issues. So we expect it to be much more than this. Um, and yeah, the combined uh, business risk here, um, the, the fact that half of the respondents last year reported that they didn't have any exposure to substantive water related risk is very surprising given the prevalence and increased nature of water scarcity issues, which I'm sure many of you have heard from our previous panels. Um, and the fact that investors and customers, as Jerome mentioned, seek data only from companies for which water is a material or at least highly relevant issue. Um, some of the data that we've seen now is that of, the rep of those reporting uh, exposure to these risks, apparel and manufacturing sectors are amongst those with the lowest proportion of companies reporting water risk exposure. 
This is surprising, uh, given that these sectors tend to be heavy users of both water and chemicals uh, in both direct operations and uh, supply chains. Next slide, please. Uh, this goes into the uh, the question um, in the chat, but uh, these are the top 10 risk drivers that are currently being reported right now. Uh, so you have at the top there increased water stress. That's an easy one, right? Um, flooding, increased water scarcity, drought. Number five is declining water quality. And that's something that I want to touch on later, that this is pretty low in the list uh, in reporting risk drivers. And this has to do with you know, uh, pollution uh, related issues. And the root causes of pollution related risk for companies and their investors are, are usually the potential that we, this is what we've gleaned from the information, the potential for a company to release pollutants into fresh water, leading to fines or penalties, as well as brand damages and loss of social license to operate. Um, but this is uh, not the whole picture uh, because we see that we found that companies really underestimate the associated risks of water pollution. That's what we're seeing. Only 10% uh, reporting it at, at, as a top risk, right? Um, so it's not really lining up with what we're seeing uh, globally in terms of stress uh, from pollution. Um, and some of those topics, yeah, as mentioned, you've probably seen um, half of the rivers in the United States, for example, are unfit for swimming. 60% of Europe's fresh water is polluted. So um, these are the risk drivers being reported right now, but there's still more data that, that, sh that could be uh, uh, reported in the future as long as more companies disclose to CDP. Uh, next slide, please. So here we're going to talk a little bit about the sector. Um, so CDP went to a sector specific questionnaire uh, framework in 2018. Um, from the companies that we see reporting uh, exposure to water risks, this means companies have selected yes, we have water related risks with the potential to have a substantive financial or strategic impact on our business and substantive impact is actually defined by the company itself. Um, so they've, they, they, the, the mineral extraction, power generation and fossil fuel industries, probably due to the amount of exposure they have already to compliance and regulatory risks um, have been ahead of the game for a while. Uh, and they, they, they 90% of mineral extraction are reporting exposure to, to risks, but we, we do expect it to be higher for apparel and manufacturing, for example. Um, but uh, yes, so we'll, we'll, you know, it's, we'll see how, how that pans out in, in the future. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, so yes, uh, a spotlight on pollution. Uh, now let's just, this is the, one of the main topics of our water report that it is an invisible crisis that you know, I think that we're gonna see in the future that companies will be sort of waking up to this. And I think disclosing the CDP will be sort of a starting point for a lot of companies to assess whether this is this is material. Um, companies may be blind uh, to pollution risks. Um, you know, 10% uh, of companies reporting uh, pollution risks, as I mentioned before. And of course, these, these are the same sectors that have already experience uh, with assessing their risks and reporting to CDP. So it, it, it follows that these are the ones who are still reporting pollution risks. Uh, you can see that mineral extraction is up there with 36%. And then there's a pretty steep drop off, you know, to materials. Um, and it could be that these, these companies uh, who aren't reporting them aren't assessing properly, aren't assessing their discharges, which is something that the CDP questionnaire will sort of uh, help you to, 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 under, to, to do uh, in terms of water accounting. Um, so yeah, it's a small group of respondents who are reporting risks to pollution. Only 232 out of 2,500 are beginning to understand the implications of this. Um, our, anal our analysis in the report suggests, uh, again, that most respondents may be blind to this risk. Uh, despite the shifting regulatory and consumer landscapes, 90% of all respondents did not report any risk, and the situation may be driven by the false impression that, and this is what we've seen, that the of immateriality um, resulting from the traditionally low financial impact of regulatory fines in the scope of a company's budget. These are small blips, um, but in terms of uh, it's just noise on, on the, the profit and loss sheet, um, but they could have uh, more serious uh, consequences to procuring raw materials or, um, you know, affecting your business growth strategy moving forward if you have a high dependence on, 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 on fresh water. Uh, next slide, please. So 
we've seen yeah business as usual response is still dominating which is alarming and i think you know we should we should wake up to this um we've seen a range of responses from companies last year uh most can be categorized as actually business as usual with only a few leadership uh, uh companies and and there were only around 70 a-list companies for cdp um last year so there's a lot of work to be done um, and a lot of sort of effort to be made here um Pollution management responses uh, have been sort of, you know, the the usual. It's been important, it, you know, it's been important, yeah, but it's not been transformational. Uh, most respondents to CDP last year are focused on managing the risks and impacts associated with their potential to release pollutants into fresh water. In this case, the adage that you measure what you measure, what you manage, um, you can only measure what you manage. Sorry, you can only manage what you measure. <laughs> Holds true, and encouragingly, our analysis shows that 50%, 57% of respondents are monitoring the wastewater they discharge, 57, in some form across the majority of their facilities. So it's about half the companies who are even monitoring whether they're polluting and whether they have risk to this. However, less than half are monitoring the actual quality of the discharges, and we've seen this from the responses in current state, number one, um, section one, either by temperature or affluent parameters. Uh, and companies in the mineral extraction and power generation sectors are really leading the charge on this. Uh, next slide, please. Another uh, sort of uh, result of the of the analysis is that target setting uh, needs improving. Only 12% of responding companies set pollution reduction targets. And we know that from climate change, if you've you know um, been involved with climate change strategies, setting a target is extremely important for driving the actions that companies take. It sets uh the the marker and it it really defines what's the strategy is going to be to reach that target T target setting is essential um it also plays a vital role in pollution management available evidence shows that targets are important elements in the successful execution of corporate strategies can lead to both cost and impact reductions promote innovation and reduce dependency yet when it comes to target setting to avoid pollution only 12 percent seems a little bit small um, and that's what we've seen from, from our reporting uh, last year. And it's important to highlight that more targets may exist, but companies do not refer to them as water pollution related, as is the case with plastics uh, related targets and, and set by an increasing number of companies um, in the food and beverage sector. Uh, so it is sector dependent. And that's why CDP is so pivotal, because it's sort of trying to standardize these, what, you know, the, the, the variety of targets into, into a comparable uh, form. Uh, so you can see what the benchmark is. Uh, something that we've seen, uh, you know, a good example of setting targets, Caring, uh, a company that we work with, with our CDP Reporter Services program, uh, is a luxury apparel company and uh, sets good targets aiming to have 100% implementation of its sustainability standards by its suppliers by 2025, which includes uh, guidelines on water management for raw material production and um, Caring, uh, the company, uh, understands that leather is one of the most environmentally in intensive raw materials and the standards promote chrome free and metal free tanning, which are being taken up by many of its brands. So they're trying to reduce pollution. They're setting, there are companies that are setting good targets here, but it could be more. And it's good to, to focus on these best practice examples uh, from CDP data. Uh, next slide, please. So CDP also asks about the investment, uh, capital expenditure and operational expenditure. Um, when it comes to investment in pollution management activities, in 2019, uh, respondents anticipated spending over $8 billion US dollars on measures to mitigate pollution risks, mainly on pollution control, uh, mainly on pollution control in response to regulatory pressure, as we've seen. Over half of this figure, 4.4 billion, uh, is reported by one company. Uh, U.S. energy giant Duke Energy Corporation, uh, its investment in ash management intervention at its power plants is in response to U.S. federal state regulations. So you can see that it's a reactionary uh, target setting, reactionary expenditure. Um, the company reports that some cost recovery may be possible through the federal and state utility commissions. Next slide, please. So uh, 80% uh, of products environmental impact is determined at the design stage. Uh, for companies to thrive in a water secure future, many of the products they provide will need to be aligned with this future, a future in which the polluting potential of these products has at best uh, been designed out completely or at least been drastically minimized. Um, unfortunately, right now there is very little evidence of this ambition uh, in the disclosures made uh, by companies in 2019 
only 1% uh, of companies identify opportunities related to designing out pollution investment in product related R&D. Uh, and it does not feature uh, yeah, as a dominant response to pollu pollution related risk. And there are very few, uh, if any, targets associated with reducing the pollution potential of products. But knowing this, it's still a cause that we can we can get the word out um, that th this is something that should be taken up. Um, next slide, please. So uh, the report is available online, um, and and uh, it goes much more into detail than what I've been able to sort of uh, explain here. And I I really advise all companies uh, viewing this to, to check it out. It's 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 a great report. It's it's uh, if you have a CDP account, you can you can download it, but. Uh, it's clear from the summary of, of, of the, the findings that the business case to tackle pollution is clear. And in fact, there has never been a better time to act. Technologies are better. Regulatory, regulatory climate is favorable. And, and the business case is clear. Um, on pollution, for example, traditional regulatory structures, fines, and penalties, uh, as mentioned, they're, they're, they're just a blip on the radar if you take it in through a uh, you know, traditional corporate balance sheet. Um, as such, they're not sufficient to trigger the transformation needed to design out pollution from business activities. What disclosure through CDP offers is a chance to raise awareness of the strategic risks and opportunities businesses face from pollution from there and spark change. Um, and yeah, I think that a lot, uh, a question in the chat is, you know, why do you think responding companies do not set pollution reduction targets? And I think that buy-in from the uh, C-suit level, uh, from the top levels of an organization, uh, is is critical and 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 in order to get buy-in for for setting pollution targets at the top, understanding where the 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 scope of of the risk uh, through CDP disclosure, for example, of are you measuring this? Uh, do you have uh, vital exposure to to fresh water in your business? And and taking the effort to sort of respond to CDP, at least look at the framework, you can get a uh, sense for whether it's important for you. Uh, and then you can take this up with with your management um, uh, teams uh, to set uh, pollution related targets. And CDP offers public data for this, so you can see what companies in your sector are setting pollution related targets, and use that as sort of the uh, an impetus uh, to 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 start these conversations. That maybe you should have that because other companies are reporting risks through CDP. Um, so then, yeah, uh, just carrying on at the same time, governments and consumers are loud and clear. Uh, companies in all sectors have a legal, ethical, and financial obligation, ethical as well, to act. While there are seeds of best practice, we have a long way to go before the effective elimination and management of corporate water pollution moves to the mainstream. Too many responders appear blind to the water pollution business risks, uh, and investors and cu customers have an important role to play in raising this as an issue of concern in shareholder resolutions, uh, supplier contracts, earnings calls, and one-to-one -one engagements. Uh, CDP will continue to gather this data to support these efforts whilst also tracking the progress companies are making. And I just want to finish up, uh, you know, as a call to action uh, within that last slide, you know, these are the sort of uh, risks that are being reported um, for water pollution. So uh, you can see on this map here that this is what we've seen so far uh, across sort of all geographical zones. Um, even you can see EDF investing 440 million to mitigate the risk of power plant shutdown due to thermal pollution regulations, 440 million uh, due to this risk. Um, but uh, it's important to understand um, like, you know, the, that, that the perceived, why companies aren't acting on this, even though it's so important as we've seen from the data um, and a barrier to water action uh, is the perceived low value of the resource. Uh, as such, management of water remains in the boiler, you know, at the lower levels in the boiler room. It, it doesn't really register. The result of this is we never get the transformations of industry that we are so desperately needed uh, to deliver on the EU's zero pollution ambitions. Uh, and what disclosure through CDP offers is a chance to raise awareness of the strategic risks and opportunities business face from pollution. And from there, from what you know, uh, spark change. We are, for example, now seeing uh, more CEOs from this year's disclosure, we've seen more CEOs with pollution related incentives. Uh, so we're already seeing that right now. Uh, it's a new question this year in the 2020 questionnaire. Um, right, so that, that sort of summarizes it. Please feel free to reach out if you're curious about getting started with CDP disclosure, or if, if you're already uh, disclosing to CDP, we have uh, packages available for benchmarking and data, data and, and analysis, which could really start these conversations. 
uh, to see how your competitors are, are, are doing in terms of uh, reducing uh, exposure to pollution risk. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Andreas. Very good uh, presentation. Um, so we're going to take questions now. You you have a Q and A uh, box normally where you can type in pre questions. Um, I think Andreas, you you've answered one of them, which was um, can you say something which uh, which risks are mostly mentioned? Uh, I think you you answered that one already. So if, if that's uh, that's all right. And, and um, I will take a question from uh, who we, uh, how are the scores calculated? What's to, what are the criteria to decide what's a good or bad score? That's a good question. Really, I, I didn't go into details. I just uh, presented that indeed with CDP um, produces a score. Well, first of all, I'd like to mention that the, as everything uh, with CDP, the methodology of uh, the CDP score is public. So if you go on cdp.net, on the top right of the website, you have guidance uh, button. And on the guidance button, you can actually uh, click on companies uh, guidance documents. And that's where you will find um, the methodology. So there's, there's several aspects to the methodology. But in a nutshell, um, the, the way um, the score is, is created is, is by looking at the raw data. And so each question will have points associated to it. And the way we, the, the, the CDP has designed the methodology is um, by giving letters between A being the best, going down to B, C, and D, and D being the, the basic one. Below that, it's F, failure to disclose. We cannot rate you. We just have no transparency. But so to go from D to to see, it's like climbing stairs. You need to pass a certain amount, of a certain score before you can be rated in the next category. And um, so it's really a tracking progress of companies um, and, and the, the level of, of, of action. So at the D level, it's really about disclosing and answering enough questions so that um, the responses can be compared to another company. At the C level, it's what we call the awareness level. It's really about answering the questions, but answering them in a more in, in an exhaustive way so that we really can see that um, you have a, an exhaustive understanding, a good general understanding of your impact on, on water and the impact on your business it may have. So that's really about awareness. And if you pass it enough points related to questions uh, that are being tracked on awareness, then you qualify to be rated on the uh, B level, which is the management level. And there, the questions that are related to actions are taken into consideration and, and weight, weighted in. Um, and there, uh, it's really about uh, setting targets. It's about um, describing when you disclose some risks, what method of action, methods have you uh, have you put in place to tackle those risks and address those. Um, we talked about um, Andreas talked about uh, remuneration is is also a way to take action. <clears throat> and yeah, I would just like to sort of. Um preface or sort of uh, elaborate a bit on the first question too uh on, on the risks which risks are are mostly mentioned um we see that in climate change disclosure it's mainly transition risks uh regulatory risks uh the increased pricing of greenhouse gas emissions whereas uh, water is much different it's 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 mainly you know are you in a water scarce region um and it just shows sort of the urgency of the issue in my opinion because now companies are starting to wake up to physical risks due to climate um, but these things are interlinked, uh, so so it's 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 insightful to see that from water disclosure, increased water stresses and flooding are the top two uh, risks disclosed. But it hasn't really got that to that maturity in climate change yet. So that's something that I think we'll be start to see um, in the future. And Andreas, do we have any uh, companies that are setting internal water prices that are higher than the national authorities are are requesting companies to pay? Yes, we do actually. Uh, we do have companies setting internal water prices. Um, unfortunately, I, 
I don't have uh, the names on hand right now, but this data is available through through CDP uh, disclosure. Um, and this is the kind of insights that we can gain from from assessing the, the data, but but we, we do see that. Well, thank you. I think this I can't see more questions in the chat, so I think we can we can wrap up here. Um, Please, if you if you want to know more about the data, about the reports or anything, you have our email addresses there. Uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, we do work with very many different stakeholders, and um, when and of course we're interested to to do more work uh, mm -hmm. with uh, with you guys, uh, member of the Water Europe team, as, as you are also expert on this on this matter. So if we can help you, please reach out. And thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much for participating and uh, thanks Water Europe for hosting us. Have a nice day. Thank you. <laughs>